In this video, we show how to design a Turing machine that accepts the following language. Um, LA is the language of strings with the form A to the N, B to the N, C to the N, where N is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we could have ABC, AABBCC, three A's, three B's, three C's in that order, or we could have the empty string. These are all in this language. Okay, so um, let's think about a simple string in the language first before we start designing this machine. So let's take an easy one. So our idea is we need to find a way to count or to match the A's to B's to C's to make sure that there's the same number of them. So what we're going to do um, is when we start up the machine, um, and remember that we're going to implicitly reject whenever there is a transition that we can't take. Okay, so uh, we start off our machine, we expect to see an A. If we don't see an A um, or we don't see a blank, we'll handle that case last, we'll handle the empty string last. So we're gonna assume there's at least one character in the input. If I don't see an A, I'm not gonna be able to take any transitions, okay? So we're gonna build our machine um, with that understanding that we're gonna implicitly reject if we can't take a transition. So what I wanna do is be able to mark this A as having been seen. Um, and there's a number of ways to do this. We can, ins we can introduce a new symbol, um, A with a dot on top of it, um, or we can replace it with number, another symbol that says, this is an A I've already checked. So let's do that. Let's replace um, A's we've already checked with X's. Okay, so I want to replace the A with an X. Okay, that means I've seen that A. All right, now having seen that A, I also need to check that I see a B and then a C. All right, so we would be about here. So I'm gonna scan right until I see a B. Okay, so I see a B. I'm gonna replace that B with another symbol that says I've seen a B and it's gonna be Y could be anything, we're just gonna use a Y. So now I'm here. Okay, now I'm gonna scan right. I'm gonna skip over any Bs until the first C I see. Okay, and then I'm gonna replace that with another symbol. Okay, so this is the first phase, okay? So the first phase basically says read an A, skip over any A's, and then find a B. Okay, mark that B, scan right, find a C. If we've achieved all of this, it means that at the beginning we have at least um, uh, one B and C for the, for the first A. Okay, so we would have something that looks like this. Um, and now we've matched an A to a B to a C. So now we wanna go back to the beginning and do it again. Okay, so after replacing the C, I could go left and then what do I need to do? Now I'm looking for another A to match. So I'm gonna skip over anything um, that's not an A. Okay. Now, I could stop here, but I don't know that this is the first A to match. Um, if I had a string. Okay, then, then this would correspond to this one right here. And I will have replaced this one, this one, this one, but I don't want to start replacing this with an X. This could be problematic because it leaves this guy, okay, and it makes it harder to check. What I really want to do is go to the A that's immediately to the right X. Okay, I want to go to the first A that's not marked, not just any A that's not marked. So what I really need to do is scan left until I see an X that tells me you've already seen this A, and then I'm going to go right. Okay, so it's a little extra tape head movement, but it avoids this problem where we have this A sitting between X's. Okay, and now I'm gonna repeat that phase that I already had. I'm gonna replace the A with an X and move right. Okay, I've already seen this B. I'm looking for a B I haven't seen. So I'm gonna skip over any Y's and find the first B. Okay, again, because of this situation, I wanna keep um, checking the first one, the first unchecked B. Okay, so now I'm gonna replace that with a Y and move right. Okay, and then I would skip over any Bs if I had any more, if I had a case like this. Okay, where I have an extra B. I'm gonna skip Bs. 
And in fact, I'm going to skip Z's. I'm looking for the first C I haven't checked. I'm going to replace that one. Okay, and on C's we always move left. Okay, now I'm looking for uh, an A that I haven't seen. So I'm going to scan left. I'm going to skip over any B's. I'm going to skip over any Y's. I'm going to skip over any A's if I have any A's left. And I don't, and I see an X. So while I'm scanning left looking for an unchecked A, I find an X before I ever find an A. What does that tell me? That tells me that I've checked all the A's. Okay, and if I've checked all the A's, it means I've run out of A's. There are no more A's to check. So now, if the string is in the language, I have also replaced all of the B's and C's with Y's and Z's. If it's not in the language, I'm going to have an extra B or a C somewhere in the string. Okay, so now I've checked all the A's. That's what running into this X before an A means. And now I want to be able to check and see, um, basically, is there a B or a C left? If there is, I want to reject. If there isn't, I want to accept. So what we're going to do is we're going to move right, and we're going to skip over all the Y's. And again, if I ever see a B, I'm going to uh, implicitly reject. Then I'm also going to skip over all the Z's. And then if I run into a blank space, having not seen a B or a, B or a C, this means that after replacing all the A's, I also replaced all the B's and I also replaced all the C's, which means they were equal. And I can go ahead and accept the string. Okay, so that's going to be the the algorithm that we're going to follow in building this Turing machine. So let's see if we can do that. So let's start off in state Q0. What was the first thing that we did? We read an A. And we replaced it with an X and we moved right. Okay. Now what did we do? We wanted to look for an unmatched B. So we needed to skip over all the A's by just replacing the A with the A and moving right. Um, and I also want to skip past any Y's. Any Y's are B's I've already seen. So I'm gonna replace it with a Y and move right. Now, when I do finally encounter a B, okay, and before I get there actually, Notice that um, if I take this first transition from Q0 to Q1 by reading an A and replacing it with an X, I better see a B if it's in the language. If I skip over all the A's and I skip over all the Y's and the next thing I see is a C instead of a B, I'm gonna implicitly reject. That string's not in the language and have a B to match to that A. Okay, so I won't, I won't continue. So this transition says uh, I matched I matched an A or I, I've uh, checked an A, so now I'm checking the B. I see a B, I replace it with a Y, it means I've seen it, and I move right. Okay, now we're scanning for C's. We need to find a C. So what are we going to skip over? Any extra B's, any unchecked B's, and we're also going to skip over any Z's. Okay, Z's are C's I've already seen. Okay, so now when I see a C, I'm gonna replace it with a Z and I'm gonna move left. I don't need to move further right on the string. Um, after I've done this, it means I've matched my A to my B to my C. So I've, I've done that first phase and we're gonna go left now. Okay. So from here, um, what do I need to do? I need to skip over, let's see if I can fit these all in. All right, let's flip back here just to see. When I've read this Z, it might have been, let's look here. Um, if I'm in this case, I need to skip over Z's and Y's, as well as B's. So uh, let's say I have an intermediate string, this one. Okay, so I just, I just replaced this one and I moved left. So I need to skip over any Z's I see, any B's I see, any Y's, any A's, and I'm looking for an X. I'm looking for the X to tell me 
this is where you need to restart this procedure. Okay, so if I see um, a Z, I'm gonna skip it and move left. If I see a, yeah, we can put a Y there. If I skip a, see a Y, I'm gonna skip it and move left. If I see a B, I'm gonna skip it and move left. If I see an A, I'm gonna skip it and move left. Should be all the ones I need to do, yeah. All right, so what happens now when I see an X? It means restart this procedure, find the next A and match it. So go back to the beginning. So if I see an X, oops, I'm gonna write an X and I'm gonna move right. I'm looking for an A now. That's what Q0 means, looking for an A. Okay, and then maybe I take this loop many times as I'm checking things off. Okay, this loop is gonna handle things until either it implicitly rejects or it gives me something that looks like X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z. Okay, how do I know that? Because I got all the way to the X, I moved right, and I did not find an A, I found a Y. That's how we know to start the second, uh, second phase, the second verification phase. Okay, so in Q0, if I see a Y, let me get this transition in there, I think I can. If I see a Y, I write a Y and I move right. Let's go to state Q4. All right, in state Q4, we're going to skip over any Ys and skip over any Zs. Notice here that I do not skip over any Bs and I do not skip over any Cs. Right, if I've gotten to state Q4, it means I've run out of A's. If I ever see a B here, I need to reject. If I ever see a C here, I need to reject. Okay, so the only things we're skipping are Y's and Z's. This means um, symbols that I have matched to all of the A's because I've run out of A's, right? Okay, so I'm gonna keep moving right. How long do I move right? Until I run into a blank. When I run into a blank, it means that all of this, the I've run out of A's, I've matched all my A's, I've also run out of B's and C's, I've matched those. So now all I have in my string is X's, Y's, and Z's. So I see a blank, I write a blank, and I move right, or I could move left, it doesn't really matter here. And I go to Q accept. Okay. So this handles anything of the form a to the n, b to the n, c to the n, such that n is greater than zero, right? For the way the machine currently works, it says you have to read an A, okay? In order to take the transition from Q0 to Q4, I have to read a Y, which means I have had to have taken all these loops at the top, um, so I had to start off reading an A. However, our language is for n greater than or equal to zero, so I have to be able to accept the empty string. How do I accept the empty string? If I start off my machine and I have a blank on my tape, that's the empty string. So I'm gonna move right uh, and I'm gonna accept. Okay, so as long as we didn't introduce any errors, I don't think so, I'm double checking, but it looks, it looks right then this is our Turing machine for this language.